What's up, everybody? It's your boy here. You guys, a review for Little Women of Atlanta. Let me preface this by saying two things. One, I forgot to mix the tea, so when I come back, I'll have it ready. One, two, had a crazy day. A lot of shit happened. Your boy in his feelings, so this may not necessarily be how my review is normally, y'all, but y'all y'all just bet with a motherfucker. Hey, shit happens, then. So, um, Juicy invites Minnie to lunch. But doesn't tell me the time is going to be there. So she and her feelings about that. Now they, now Juice ain't say shit, but those two, many in time, start going back and forth about what happened the previous night. And of course, many feels kind of way because she felt that um, Tanya came at her incorrect. I don't really answer. Well, it is what it is. Out of all the bullshit that was said, Tanya said one thing that I didn't agree with. If this was your party and you was trying to, you know, have it be about you, this and the third. Why would you bring the drama? You brought this shit, so you can't be mad at anybody but yourself. Long story short, now Chris then up and did. Now, look, damn it, I'm gonna just say Paul Print and Hart, okay? Paul Print told Hart, hey, look, okay, you go how you need to leave this motherfucker alone because you keep saying he's taking you through with this, that, and third. You know, Hart said, yeah, I know, la, 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 la. And then it was even mentioned that, if I'm not mistaken, he, I think he has a hearing, and if he is submissive, this old boy gonna be up in jail. And I think it was Alexander Rogers that mentioned that Chris is a go to the store nigga. That's the motherfucker that go to the store and don't come the fuck back. I don't know how many times she gonna let this motherfucker come in and out of her life, but hey, if she like it, I love it. So Sam and Tanya are together now. Uh, somebody that I work with actually brought up the fact that Tanya had a man because it was mentioned last season. You see how I really gave a fuck about that but um apparently you know they were together she was leaving for Atlanta he didn't want her to take the kids so she up and brought the kids so now he is coming and it's this issue of you know what if he wants to take the kids this and third I'm not gonna let him take the kids you know what before you know when, when he gets here I'm gonna get some notarized state the terms and whatnot why the fuck you didn't do that any motherfucking way but again hey don't really care and I've already told y'all how the fuck I feel about Tanya. Here's the I'm not really rocking with Sam, but at the same exact time, hey, Sam is a battery back bitch. It is what it is. She lets the battery get put in her back. I can't really be too, too mad at her about that. But again, Tanya, Tanya, throw that rock out of her hand, but we gonna see how this shit kicks. All right, so I got my tea, so we can go ahead and we, we can do, do this for real, for real now. All right, so... Uh, Mo Money and Juicy go to this, I think it's Atlanta Social Group, okay? To do some charity work, some shit like that. They talk about the girls, yeah, yeah, blah, blah. Long story short, that group is going to have a masquerade party, and, you know, the girls, well, all the girls are invited. So, we're going to see that. Gary, okay, so, Minnie is dating this guy named Gary, which she met at the Speed Daddy. You know, so, they're sitting down, and, um, you know, uh, Minnie brings up uh, her birthday party, they said her, brings up the mud shot, and you know, uh, his whole thing is, is what we all say shit, everybody got a fucking pass. Again, like I said last week, one, Minnie should have never brought that shit up, but even when she, she should have never opened that plug in, but even when she did, once she said everybody has a pass, she didn't have to say shit else. You feel what I'm saying? Again, not, at, I'm not going to rehash what I said last week. Gary said he has a seven-year-old son. They good together. It is what it is. Uh, Moni and Sam, they sit down. They rehash again that party. Uh, moving past that, um, Sam brings up uh, Tanya and her uh, Tanya's baby daddy, their whole situation, the fact that neither one of them legally has custody. It's an up-in-the-air thing, kind of mutual agreements because they don't want to get the courts involved. And Moni feels, some, Moni feels some kind of way because she went through some similar custody battle and all that shit with her son because she feels that she needs to talk to Tanya to try to toss some sense into it and, you know, keep this shit from going left. Alright, so Paul Print is in the gym with Moni because she needs to lose, you know, some of this uh, fat and shit game because, you know, heart stamp, you know, they lost all that damn weight, you know, you know, with the pregnancy and everything, she feeling self-conscious and shit. They talk about, you know, Chris being a stone motherfucker, and, you know, it is what the fuck it is. Don't care. On some, on some real shit, all these recurring other shit, I, I, I just, I can't do it today. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. 
Uh, Tanya, so Morty comes over to Tanya's house, talks to Tanya about the kids, and, you know, she mentioned that, yeah, he came. I, you know, I gave him the papers. He said, what the fuck is this? Do the papers, and then he up and left. I'm assuming he up with the damn kids. They talk about that shit is what it is. She leave. Now, Tanya feels some kind of way because well, the only motherfucker not person I told was Sam. So let me talk to Sam. Sam, why you up here talking? You don't tell me business and shit. Well, I thought you wouldn't listen to me. So I tried to pick somebody else who I thought you might be able to listen to. You know, feeling that trust, you know, was on, um, you know, being destroyed and all this other shit. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah. Some will understand. And that's just one of those where you kind of have to be able to feel. Um, what, um, like, what is appropriate to share, what isn't appropriate, but yeah, at the same exact time, I don't really see it being that big of, it's, it's a problem, yes, but it's not that big of an issue, because they are, fr- all three of them are friends, you know, but, hey, it is a problem, they kiss, they made it up, it is what it is, now, Paul Prince, Juicy, and Moni, they go and mash out for the masquerade ball, Juicy tells them, I can't come, Money feels like come kind of way, she's like, girl, I'm in hot demand, because she does promotions and whatnot. She's on the Rick and Smiley show and whatnot. Like, she got jobs. Okay, she ain't on her... She, here's the thing. She ain't on her ass. Chasing the motherfucking voiceover career. While your motherfucking man up and quit the job he had when he got a truck driving job to sit here and provide for your ass. And you know what? See, I'm doing too much right now. Mm-mm, no. Doing too much, get it. Get back. Get back. Now, Gary... Minnie's uh, boyfriend, it's time for him to meet the mama. It's time for him to meet Cora. Okay, he got to meet Cora now. So they sit down. You know, we ain't finished with it, but Cora's starting to get his man a third degree. You know, were you ever married? He's like, yeah, you know, for a year and a half. And now, it could be by virtue of editing, but it seemed like, you know, she went straight in with the next question. Like, this motherfucker's going to a military board, and it's like shotgun, shotgun, shotgun question. Ask one question. Here's another one. Ask one. And that's one of those where he should... Uh, it, I, I don't feel that he was keeping, you know, the tone because, you know, it's one of those where he could have said that and gave it back to a straight face and he could have set the tone for that. It is what the fuck it is. You feel what I'm saying? And at the same exact time, I'm one of those where if I got to sit here and get grilled like this by one of your parents and we old as fuck, I ain't got time for that shit. Because here's the thing, not talk too much about my damn personal life, but my mom, my dudes. She made it clear she don't give a fuck about who any of her boys date. You know, she don't give a fuck about the bitch. But her whole thing is this. As long as she do right by you, I don't have a fucking problem. Now, the moment she starts sitting here and going left or whatnot is when Mama Beck will have a motherfucking problem. That's it. That's all. Other than that, Mama don't get no fuck who the fuck we with. She don't get no fuck. But anyway, ask him that. What church do you attend? Have you ever dated a little person? And then that's where it stops. So I, I can't wait to see what the fucking question she asks this dude. dude. Alright, so the last question that uh, Gary was asked, have you ever dated a little person? He said no. And the mom was like, you know what, just don't hurt her. Now, before I get into what he said after that, here's my whole thing. If your daughter, your daughter, they lied about being with a motherfucker, okay? Then she didn't lie about getting knocked up by the motherfucker, okay? Then she lied about having a miscarriage with that motherfucker, to that motherfucker, then everybody else in the group. You should, therefore, be happy that somebody has taken interest in her ass. Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying that Minnie is ill because she's not. She got a fucked up personality and dispositional life and everything. But she's not ugly. But if you have somebody that is showing genuine interest, so she can sit here and start lying all the motherfucking time, but you want to say, get a motherfucking third degree. Now, what if you would have ran the motherfucker off? Now, he started talking about how he likes to, you know, watch the young and the wrestlers. Why he say that? Forrest Rocks. That was um the thing that turned that turned her around, you know, turned her all her just like then shit. And that was I don't know if I don't think he knew, but once he said that, oh, she was on his scene like, oh well, you know, I was watching back when so and so was on. I don't know, watch that shit, but so and so was on so and so on so and so. And then they fucking click, you know. So you know what? Good for him. All right, good for him. But on some real shit, I think low-key Cora wanted him. I think that's what it was. Uh, Heart Stamp is... um. Okay, so I just want to bring up... Why the fuck Heart Stamp almost bust her shit in them motherfucking computers? I swear for Lord, has she fucking failed. 
it would have been done. Like I probably like y'all, like, I would hit record just so y'all could have genuinely saw me laughing at her motherfucking ass. Okay. But she said she ain't wore heels in a hot motherfucking minute. I don't know nothing about that, so whatever the fuck it is. But what I swear when she did that wobble, back, baby, I almost fell the fuck out. So you got hard stamp. Now, you know, Paul Print ain't gonna be there because she's staying back with the baby. So you got hard stamp, you got Sam, Tanya, Minnie, and Money. At the party. Now, you got people taking pictures and shit. You got people crouching down at their level and shit. You got people calling them cute and shit. They feel some kind of way. But, and here's the, I do understand. I can empathize. Is empathize? I'm trying to figure out which one is it. I, I mean, I can sympathize and empathize. Because, you know, being Jewish, like I said, I don't have my, my yarmulke on right now. And if anybody was wondering, I don't have it on. Because, like I said, I will be going to Germany. Fingers crossed. That's long as nothing new bad later on this year and i'm trying to uh get myself in the pro in the condition to not wearing it full time like i normally do because i'm not trying to bring no unnecessary attention to myself okay like i said i'm gonna be a black jew over in germany i ain't ain't nobody got time for no motherfucking drama so i'm trying to get used to it but even before that being in korea and even being in the states yes motherfuckers stare and i've gotten to the point where i've trained myself to just not pay attention every now and again i will catch it I just train myself to not even fucking, you know, even worry about it. Because I know me, I pop the fuck off, but you know, I'm trying to do better. So my thing is, y'all should be somewhat used to it. Granted, it's not saying that it's going to hurt any fucking less, but y'all just let me know. If y'all let me know how y'all feel about it. Maybe maybe I'm too far left on the shit. And nobody's having a good time. And Sam and, you know, many ain't said shit to each other. Then Sam said, so many, let me go talk to y'all side. All right, so let me go ahead and get through the fuck shit so we can sit here and briefly talk about the preview for motherfucking next week. So, Sam apologizes, many apologize. The only thing I have about this fucking apology is, Sam, if you was really fucking apologetic, you would have apologized before this party, not when shit got awkward because y'all weren't fucking talking to each other. All the real shit. There's a reason I don't go to meet. I, if I'm if I have an issue with somebody, one or two, you know, I don't go to the motherfucking event. Because I don't want to sit here and turn shit out. And if I do, I tell motherfuckers that I fuck with. If I don't fuck with that person, ain't shit need to be said. Not a damn thing. Oh, y'all ready to talk to you outside? Hell no. Fuck out my face. Fuck you me. Fuck out of here. Like, that's me. It's one of those ways. If you want to holler at a motherfucker, holler at me before this shit. Don't even step to me with that bullshit. And even then, if I'm already ex your ass off, we ain't got shit to fucking talk about. Real talk. And if you need to apologize, I apologize. I accept your apology. Fuck out my face, because because we I, we we not we don't really do second chances around this motherfucker, okay? Because you ain't got but you ain't got but one mother you ain't got but one motherfucking time, so, and it's rare you get a second. So Tanya calls her cheering, and Jaden got upset because she's like, okay, I gotta go. He ain't want her to hang up. He want to fuck it in. It was sad. I didn't share the tip, and the shit went off. Now. I'm looking at the fucking, you know, preview for next week. Why Cora got to move in? With Minnie. And then how the fuck? Minnie going to hit her with, you got a 30-day time restraint or something. No, I don't think she said that, but you got a time restraint on how long you can be here. Bitch, what? Man, that's one of those where even though I am not here for Cora, even though I'm not here for Big Deborah. She best to read the eyes. She best to read read the eyes out of her motherfucking daughter for that shit. I'm just saying. I ain't saying. I'm just saying. And then I was trying to figure out how the whole scuffle with the men was going to happen. So apparently, it's going to be fucking times, baby daddy, to pop the shit off. But you know what? I'm going to be here for the shit. I hope y'all going to be here for the shit, too. I'm going to be back here next week. I hope y'all back here next week. The next fucking review I got is going to be Friday for Married to Medicine. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, I live it up towards the end of this. You know, hey, shit, shit, so spirits will brighten your spirits. So rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys later. Peace. Peace.